they will learn balance. Hey guys, this is Esports Money ZSM Mac Tim, whatever you want to call me, and I am tired. Um, but I've been thinking about doing this video for a while, and I figure I might as well. Well, now is as good as time any. So, throughout the years, a lot of people have talked about or complained about balance in Dota 2. And I'm not talking about any general trends, I'm just saying occasionally things will come up, and they're always things. But there's always something that someone's, you know, complaining about in terms of balance. You know, like, um, the, the biggest example of a hero being in balance since I started playing was uh, Centaur War Runner. And when he first came out, his ultimate was slightly better, and the cooldown was 60 seconds at all levels. He had a win rate that was over 60% in all matches, period. If you had a Centaur on your team, you did not lose. The hero was literally that good. Um... But there's also the situ there's also uh, the patch where Troll, Warlord, and Sniper were just disproportionately good compared to everyone else. They were just really, really, really strong. Um, and I kind of just wanted to take a video to talk about balance and what makes a game balanced and how a good game is balanced. Um, so when we think about StarCraft, StarCraft is a great example of a game that is uh, it's pretty balanced. I'm just I'm gonna. I'm going to talk about StarCraft working on the assumption that the game is uh, it's fairly... My hair looks ridiculous because um, it's late and I'm tired, but... StarCraft is a game that is... It's very balanced, and StarCraft, more so than Dota, and I think Dota should really take a page from StarCraft's book um, on this one one, one thing. I'm not, I'm not saying StarCraft is better and more enjoyable than Dota or anything like that. StarCraft's a great game. I'm not trying to compare them, but I think Dota should take this one thing out of StarCraft in terms of patches. We're very spoiled when it comes to patches in Dota. We get patches all the time compared to StarCraft 2, um, or at least the way StarCraft 2 was back when it was relevant, and the way Brood War sort of has always been. Patches in StarCraft come out when something is, uh, there, when a matchup is fundamentally broken, or the meta has been stale for, you know, six to nine months, versus we get a patch, uh, last year we had a very, very, very large gap between patches, but typically speaking, every three to four months we're going to get some sort of sizable balance patch. And when you have these long periods of time between patches, you start to figure things out that you didn't know existed with a patch. A lot of times Valve will, Ice Frog, I, I just... Mr. Lizard will change one thing slightly. He'll give a very, very slight buff to a hero, and it will cause people to look at the hero again and start uh, talking about the hero and testing the hero um, when he gets slightly buffed and other heroes get slightly nerfed. And they'll figure out things that were there all along. For example, uh, if you've been watching my channel for any period of time, you know that Lycan is by far, in a way, my best hero in Dota 2. I've played a roughly 1,000 games of Lycan. I have a 70% win rate in all pubs, and uh, I'm around 4,700 MMR. So I'm not great, but with Lycan, I'm pretty darn solid. He's the only hero that I really can get into the game with at any point in time, and I feel comfortable playing him. He's the only hero where I really feel like if I... Th think we've, if the game is irreparable, and I'm, if the game is irreparable, in my opinion, and I'm playing Lycan, the game is so far gone that they've been fountain farming me for five minutes. It's like, that's my attitude with Lycan. It's like, I always know there's a way to win, and I always know every way that I could possibly win, etc. You get the idea. So, when I first, I always was a big fan of Lycan, and I played him a lot, but I wasn't super good with him until I talked to this one, uh, European player, I believe he's from, uh, I'm not even going to guess because I don't want to state his country and get it wrong, but he goes by the handle Microsoft. Um, he changes up sometimes, sometimes you see him Microsy or something like that, but he was, this dude was on the European leaderboards for a while, um, he's, I think he's around 6k MMR currently, and he's, he's someone that I've always been like, whenever I'm stumped with a current patch and I can't figure out what to do, he's the guy that I come to. He is my, uh, he's my mentor and he's one of my several mentors, but he's my overall mentor in Lycan. I generally think that he's, uh, he's who I ask. And sometimes I'll ask him questions about Lycan, and he'll be like, dude, I don't know. You've played the hero a thousand games. You should be better than me by now. But really, I, I think he just, he sees the game in a different light than I do, and I need his perspective. But anyway, when I first started talking to him, I was grinding Lycan games constantly, and I just, I felt like I was doing really well, and I knew that I wasn't, like, missing a bunch of CS and I was jungling and stuff, so, like, I wasn't, 
like my farm wasn't bad there, and he only jungled like. And so I, I got in touch with him. And I was like, "Can you please look at my replays? Can you please tell me what I'm doing wrong?" And the end result of him doing that is my original 6.80 Lycan God, which if I uh, um, view all, let's see what is my. It's not my most viewed video, but it is one of my most viewed videos of all time. It is my. I want to say second or third is my second most viewed video with 88,500 views. It is, it's also 20 minutes long, which if you know anything about uh, YouTube views, it's, I would say 88,000 views on a 20 minute video is more impressive than 200,000 on a three minute video. Like that's a lot of minutes of watch time for that one guide. It is the best, it is by far the best guide I've ever made because it's, it's my hero, it's what I know. And I gave him my replay and I asked him, uh, what am I doing wrong? What 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 can I do to f to fix this? I should be winning. I practice this hero for five to eight hours a day. Um, this is all I do in my free time. Um, like why why am I not winning? And he looked at it, and he the the one thing that I'll remember from that conversation. I keep trying to fix my hair because I feel like it looks absurd, but. He, he tells me, uh, you never do Ancients. He gave me a list of things and a list of mistakes I made. And then he says, you never do Ancients. The never do Ancients line alone was like, it just like clicked. And suddenly I was like, I should be farming Ancients. And then I started farming Ancients and I started, that was probably the single biggest thing he told me. But he gave me a list of small things that add up to almost as much. And I suddenly went from like a high 55% win rate to the hero to as good as I am with the hero now, with just that bit of advice. And the reason I'm telling this whole story is because we remember my guide from 6.80. In 6.80, Lycan was a broken hero. He was the best hero in Dota 2. He was picked every single map at the International. Like, he was picked or banned every single map at TI4. He was the best hero in the game, in terms of, like, you wanted that on you. He was, he was so, so good. And... When, when Microsoft and I had this conversation, it was the patch before this one. I was winning all of these games, and I went from 3K, like 3K 3300, which was a very, that was several weeks of work, to going from 3300 to 4700 in about a week. Literally a week of like five hours of, about eight hours of Dota a day, but probably five, five and a half hours average of, uh, of uh, ranked games a day, I went up around like 13 or 1400 MMR in a week. It was absurd. And this was before the patch where he was completely broken. In that patch, 6.79, when I got good with the hero, no one thought the hero was good. No one picked him almost ever. He was largely overlooked. He was not a popular hero. For reference, uh, his wolves got crazy regen, which was then removed and replaced with his patches, or and replaced with uh, his passive. The crazy regen passive that his wolves had was added in 6.80. So this is like mm, spring of 2014. But in the end of 2013, early 2014, when I talked to Microsoft, this was when I got good. And this was actually, I didn't feel like I was any better with the hero in his overpowered patch than his patch before where nobody picked the hero. I thought he was excellent. I mean, I, I feel like there's no difference. I didn't really notice the change. I was excited because I was like, I'm going to win the hell out of some games. But I didn't need that patch to be good with the hero. And I think that's that's like a problem that happens only in games like Dota where you get regular updates. I'm not saying we need less updates. I'm just saying maybe less drastic ones. Um, or maybe these little tiny slight updates I like because people go, well, this hero is broken in the patch. Well, no, he has plus one starting armor or plus five base damage. What this is doing is incentivizing people to experiment with the hero, and when they do experiment with the hero, they're realizing that, wow, this hero is really good now. Well, no, the hero's just been really good. That slight change just caused you to play him. Um, and in StarCraft, where they have these big periods of time, people figure things out that they wouldn't otherwise if they were just following a patch. The patch creates the meta, but if you don't patch the game, the meta can evolve on its own, and you can get a pretty dy dynamic game out of it. Um, it was in like the, it was in the mid or late 2000s uh, where this famous Protoss player, I'm, I'm pretty sure it was Bisu, is, is Bisu? I, I can't remember, this guy, anyway. Uh, Protoss had just been being slaughtered by Zergs forever, and Day9's told this story like eight times, so if you watch a lot of Day9, he'll tell you the same story. But the guy figured out that if you make, uh, 
if you just snipe all of their overlords with air-to-air -air units and then build Dark Templar, they won't have detection. You can just slaughter them with Dark Templar. And if you micro that effectively, it's so good that Zerg doesn't really have a response to it. And he did this strategy so well that the Protoss win rate against Zerg went from 45-55 to 55-45 just because one guy figured out one thing. And I think we don't see that option enough because we have so many freaking frequent patches. But the big thing that I want to talk about, or the next thing that I want to talk about, which is really, really Dota specific, and it's the one thing where I think every single developer gets wrong except for Dota. I really believe that Valve is the only, well not Valve, but uh, Ice Frog, whoever does their balancing, they're the only team, and they still mess this up sometimes, but I feel like they're the only balance team that really gets this thing right. And that's when a hero is too good, you make him worse at what he's bad at, not worse at what he's good at. That's the way to keep a hero relevant, to keep him filling those niche roles, and to make him just better. When you when you buff and nerf a hero, you should be buffing the things that he's good at and nerfing the things that he's bad at. Heroes should be filling these extreme gaps. There's this old joke uh, that we tell people... And by we, I mean like Reddit as a community or just Dota players as a community. We tell people that start playing the game, uh, Dota is balanced because everyone is overpowered. And it's really true, and it's what makes the game awesome. It's what makes the game good. Every hero is, most heroes, I, I, in, a, in a perfect world, in the way the game is really balanced, every hero is stupidly overpowered at what they're good at and in certain situations. And every hero is laughably terrible at the things that they're bad at. So Lycan, when they nerfed Lycan, and this was a pretty serious nerf, they nerfed a bunch of things about him, um, and I don't agree with a lot of them, but the one thing that they, I think, did an excellent job in nerfing was when they changed his ultimate to give you a 1.5 second transformation time and increased max movement speed because it makes you better at chasing people down if you plan it ahead, and it makes you better at running away. Maybe give another, maybe take that 1.5 seconds, maybe just a flat two seconds and add that to the total duration of his ultimate so that you can plan to ultimate, go in and rat, and then escape while in your ultimate form. It makes it harder so you can't just decide to escape on the fly, but once you're in your ultimate form, literally no one can catch you because you move above the max move speed cap unless you've got a Bloodseeker who's got his passive like maxed out. But it's, it's excruciatingly rare. The hero is so stupidly fast. Um, the hero was actually kind of weak, um, or not, not weak, but I had... I started to notice trouble in my pubs getting close to TI4 when I was playing Lycan because Blink Dagger got buffed. It no longer costs mana. So everyone was buying a Blink Dagger just all the time. So you could escape Lycan, even if you planned out that gank correctly because of the way your ultimate worked. But if you add that bonus movement speed and you plan ahead, use your ultimate, then go for the gank, that helps him with that situation, yet it still makes him... It makes it harder for you to escape if you didn't plan ahead or if you're in the middle of ratting and you don't have your ultimate ready. So the hero, that, that's, that's, that's a good way to balance a hero. The way that you balance Drow, like I love, I love what they did with Drow. The way that Drow's ultimate works, she gives you more agility than she's ever given you on her ultimate. But if you have another hero up close and personal, like in super close range to her, her ultimate just gives you nothing and she can't fight and she dies. You're making the hero better at what the hero is good at. Giving her that gust pushback, they're making the hero better at what the hero is good at and worse at what the hero is bad at. It's making these heroes more extreme and to fit more specific roles. And now they're heroes that are uh, more generalized than others. Like Sven, he's he's got a lot of ways that you can play him. You can uh, farm the hell out of the map with him, or you can focus on getting a few high damage items early and ganking and then pushing quickly. Um, trying to think of another... Uh, uh, Nature's Prophet is a great example of a flexible hero that's good at a lot of things, but is ultimately really squishy to kind of counterbalance the fact that he's uh, super, super, super uh, good at, like, literally everything. Um, but, but you guys get the idea. The way that you balance a game isn't by nerfing the thing that a hero is good at, it's by buffing, the, it's by nerfing the thing that he's already bad at. Um... But sometimes you get into, and I understand that sometimes you're going to get into situations where this doesn't really work. So, uh, let's look at Terrorblade. Let's go to Terrorblade's changelog real quick.
real quick. So Terrorblade is a hero that has been like reworked a zillion times. Um, so Terrorblade was like Terrorblade was so freaking broken when he first came out. The hero is still the hero has always been good in my opinion, but the hero was like stupidly overpowered, broken. Um, but the way that they've kind of the way that they kind of reworked him, and it kind of sucks because they nerfed everything about him before they went back and started buffing him again. They nerfed all of his stats now. Um, but now he starts with 